Hello patrons, before we get into the show, I've got a quick announcement to make. You may have noticed some new art on our channel. A new banner, a few new logos. This is thanks to our new artist, the fantabulous Asmodeus. Hello! Tell us a little about yourself, Asmodeus. Well, I'm one of the many smaller artists on Discord and Twitter trying to make a living out of self-taught character design and art basics. I'm not professional with anything, but I guess I'm alright for what I want to do, which is creating characters for other people. And how did you find yourself in this strange little group of ours? So, I met one of your staff members through a commission request. It was Ira. She told me about you guys, and we became best friends, and she said that you guys needed help with banners and character art and stuff like that. So I was immediately on board, because that's, like, what I love to do. And I especially knew that I would like you guys, because you're weeaboos, <laughs> and that's my family. <laughs> yeah. What else have you been working on in the channel? Well, I am a rotating host on Akuno Tea Time, a segment of the channel. I like to watch slice of life anime and also comedy. I'm also the editor for said segment, and it's honestly so fun to do. And where can people contact you about commission work? People can contact me in the links in the description, which are my DeviantArt, my for Affinity, and my Twitter, and also my Discord tag, but that's not a link. But there you can give me inquiries on commissions, maybe you'd like to send me memes, anything really. My Discord tag will also be on any of my social media accounts that have bios and about sections. So, yeah. A fantastic addition to the tavern. We're glad to have you. I'm glad to be here. And now, back to our irregularly scheduled program. Have fun! Hello and welcome to Night Parade, the show where we watch anime and talk about it for your entertainment. I'm Fat Man. I'm Fenris. And tonight we're reviewing Oban Star Racers. Watch as an intergalactic race to secure the safety of Earth turns into a conspiracy to select a new god and save the universe from an ancient evil. I liked the parties. <laughs> <laughs> I liked the pod racing. Better pod racing. Nation. <laughs> Oh boy. So, I I guess before we go any further, we should put up a spoiler warning, as always. Because, I don't know. We do these to, uh, to build interest in shows that we like. And, therefore, we want you guys to watch it. So we don't want to spoil you entirely without giving you a chance to watch it yourselves. Yeah. But then again, depends on the show, really. Sometimes we don't shut up and we enter spoiler territory real easy. Oh, yeah. So. Tough. Tough. JoJo's. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 30 years old. It's so... your fault if, if you haven't read the part one. <laughs> yeah. So, Oban Star Racers is a French anime that aired on Jetix in 2006. And Jetix, if you don't know, is like this. It, 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 it's basically Edgy Disney what, Channel. It, it, it's basically what Tsunami was to Cartoon Network. Oh, I I just thought it was Edgy Disney Channel. Put on Disney, yeah. It it was a block in their uh in their airing that they could put. I don't know. I don't. I can't remember specifically what they put on it. But Oban was one of those shows. So, this is a show that I caught a couple times as a kid, and I, you said you saw it a bit too as well? Yes, and I must confess, kid me didn't like it. Ah. Uh. And adult me is iffy on it? <laughs> yeah, I... But that's because adult me is kind of a <laughs> I loved this show as a kid. But I never completed it. I, I just saw it as it aired on television. I saw episodes here and there. And I didn't know what to expect jumping back into this. I was hopeful 
because I, I had this clear image of it in my mind, and reviewing it, it wasn't as great as I remembered, but I do not regret watching it through, and it definitely picked up along the way. Yeah, it did. It became much more pod racing, which was nice. So, basically, humans start exploring space, and they come across aliens that try to kill them. And they enter in this long war with the alien Krogs. And it looks like the humans might lose, but suddenly, one day, the Avatar appears. And... The and only he can master all four elements. Not that avatar. Aww. <laughs> you know what's funny is after watching Obon, huh? You said uh, I kept getting uh, recommended stuff for Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if it was appealing to my interest or statement of how much Obon I watched. Because I started a bit after you. This mystical space god appears and invites the Earth to participate in a grand race in which the prize is... Oh, shit. What is becoming it? a... Wasn't it like becoming a deity or something? Well, the, the prize Next promised... Next avatar. The prize promised was the ultimate wish. Yeah. A wish that could grant you anything. Can I wish for, uh, about six more of those? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> no! No more wishes! Uh, but we start off meeting our main character, Eva Way, daughter of Don Way, a famous race manager. And she's been in a boarding school for, like, ten years or so? I can't remember. Was a long time. Years? A long time. She's been in... I, I don't... I don't recall much about the beginning half, to be honest. Me neither. Because... I don't know. It, it, it was interesting, but it wasn't pod racers. <laughs> <laughs> but she's sad because her well, dad hasn't called her on her birthday again. What did it? He just... I, doesn't care too much for her, I guess. Or didn't, or will, we might talk about that. Oh boy. So, on her 15th <laughs> birthday, she assembles this rocket seat and escapes the school in search of her father. Cause, if he's not gonna fucking call her, she might as well go find him. She gets to the company and the guy at the gate doesn't believe that she's Don Wei's daughter. Cause why would he? When has that ever worked in a show? I never. Wait, <laughs> it worked once. Really? Wait, something like just saying you're somebody's so and so's kid. Yeah. Let me in. Yeah. I think it worked once in Rakugo. Hmm. Anyway. Was it either? I, I digress. It actually happened once, and it was something. Oh. <laughs> so she gets to his company. She won't. Uh, and they won't let her in, so she just sneaks in. I, she didn't really sneak in either. She kind of flew over the gate and he didn't notice. What a terrible security guard. She comes face to face with her father and she just can't tell him that she's his daughter. And he doesn't recognize her and she panics. As any sane child whose own folk doesn't recognize them would. Their mechanic isn't in on that day, and they're, they're getting ready for a big race. And she, by chance, is a really great mechanic and, and fixes their ship. And fixes. <laughs> introduces herself as Molly. Because... Fake name is fake name. Because she saw a poster nearby with that name on it. That's, that's like looking at... Things in your room and naming yourself lotion, phone, heater. <laughs> is, is, is that your name from your room? <laughs> Looking around your room, your name is what? What? Lotion, phone, heater. Oh. 
Or alternatively, magic card, watch, water. I guess if I were to name myself from things from my room, go maybe uh, Cyndaquil tie dye. <laughs> <laughs> This is so dumb. I don't know. <laughs> who, who, who does this work on? Ever. Uh, but she's hired by her father as their spare mechanic. And then, yeah. like, the president shows up, and he's like, hey, you gotta participate in this great space race to save the Earth. And they're like, okay, sure. And they recruit a team of the best mechanics in the world, the best racer in the world. And they go off to space after being attacked by another Krog. A Krog infiltrates their base and tries to blow up their ship or something. Mm. But then they set off to one of the three planets surrounding Oban. Oban is the planet in the center of the galaxy. And there's the title. Oban Star Racers! Roll credits. Roll, cre roll credits on that Star Racer stuff. And then they do pod racing, but better. That's, yeah. I guess. That's the show. And it's wonderful. I like it. Well, I like the pod racing. Yeah. So we get to the first planet. One of the three orbiting Oban. And... It's wacky new world, strange creatures. Like, I, I love the designs of all the different aliens in the show. They're so creative. Yeah, I loved them too. Got, uh, got a red elf boy, uh, giant gnome bearded boy. <laughs> I have a question for you. All the squid head dudes. Yeah, what's up? Elves. Nothing, just elf boy. Well, not a question, but a comment. <laughs> All right. And that comment, and that comment simply is elf boy. You, you'll, I'll, I'll explain later. Got just know it involves a video game. All right. Got a uh, a weird cyber kitty with a monitor face. Got a wireframe guy. A wizard. The cast is so cool. And there's like 90 some of them in in this first planet. It, they're doing like a, a bracket style system where if you lose a race, you're eliminated. And they're trying to narrow 90 some racers down to three. And this is taking place on each of the three planets. And then it's just pod racing. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's... Better than those pod racing in Star Wars. <laughs> they participate in a series of races where they are allowed to use any means necessary to disable their opponent's vehicles, but killing an opponent is instant disqualification. So it's kind of like wacky races, but in a good way. Hmm. Initially, uh... This guy named Rick Thunderbolt. He's the he's the Earth's greatest racer, and he was brought along to be Earth's representative in this race. But during the first race, his star racer was sabotaged, and he was well, he suffered an injury that prevents him from racing ever again. So sad. That's very nondescript. <laughs> He then goes on to teach Eva the ways of racing, and she was just a stowaway. She wasn't supposed to be in the f there in the first place, but, like, she's already a pretty good racer, but she, lear she learns all of his skills, and it's, it's, it's just really cool seeing her improve as the, sh as the series goes on. And that's why we love character development! That's the best part of a series, character development. Oh yeah. We've also got, uh, Jordan Wildy, or Wildy, or... I don't... I never learned his last name. Jordan, Gunner, Gunner Boy. We've got, uh, 
Eva as the racer, and Jordan as the gunner on her starship. And then they race and race till they win. Yeah. Except for when they don't win. And they don't win a lot. They very frequently don't win. And I like that. Like, most of, most of the time in anime, you see the main character will they'll win most of the battles, and once in a while, a big battle come around, and... Oh, and beat the main character. Oh, it's gonna be a tough fight against that one. But no, like, they lose a lot. And still come out on top. Which, I... I love that. Yeah. Uh, it's basically all right. Well, it's... It's definitely not... What I... Well, I wasn't expecting much, but it's like... Definitely not exactly what I was... Thought we were gonna watch, but <laughs> in a good way. It's just like, wait. At first, like, wait. Did you just suggest... This French thing that I know a jack squat about. <laughs> and that upon Googling it, I can literally find places arguing about whether or not it's an anime. Oh, yeah. Speaking of, it's an anime, fuck you, fight me. Only the best content on this channel. Yes. Avatar The Last Airbender is my favorite anime. Ooh. You're triggering me. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> also, the art style sort of grows on you in Obon. Oh, yeah. At first, I was like, man, this jank is hell. <laughs> Every- all, all the- all the humans have Krillin syndrome. Like, fucking- they got no noses. I was referring to the movement, but oh. you're also very correct. <laughs> Which- yeah, you get used to it. I it definitely grew on me. I love it. Cuz mm -hmm. like noses are hard to draw. Noses are hard to draw. But yeah, it just seemed a bit Most of the show is 2D, but during the racing scenes, most of the uh, vehicles are 3D. Oh my god, early CG. <laughs> early oh, TV yeah. CD, CG. <laughs> We're being attacked by bad CG! I, but I it's okay. I think this show aged pretty well. Especially it, for the amount of CG in it. They definitely knew how to make the CG work. Yeah. The thing that annoys me most in anime nowadays is just, like, noticing CG. Where, just, just in the background, or where it's not supposed to be, but they, for the most part, they only used it in the racing scene, and it works really well for that. The vehicles in this are so good. They're, the vehicles that everyone rides are just as diverse as the cast, and they're so, oh, they're just so cool. They all work in different ways. There's the there's the one that floats via magnetism. There's one that turns into a robot. There's Elsa one that just rides has a fucking beetle. Rockets. Yeah. Personally, I like the beetles the most. Yeah, the beetle was cool. But I, that's because uh, elves. I was kind of partial to the uh, to the to the small dude with the pirate ship. Oh yeah, the pirate ship was cool. <laughs> but elves. Sorry. Sorry. But, yeah. Um, it, it definitely has some age on it, though. That's for sure. Yeah. And, and the audio in the first couple episodes kind of annoyed me a bit. It, it just yeah. felt like they cut the dialogue too close together. There wasn't enough spacing between words. Yeah. Or sentences or statements. But they had a lot to fit into the uh, time that they had. At least the lip flaps matched up. Oh, yeah. Which isn't always the case, even in my favorite shows. <laughs> yeah. You'll know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. If I, if I notice... 
a desync in the audio and visual aspects. It oh god, that bugs me. I don't mind for some shows because I know why they do it. Yeah. Why would and you it's... intentionally do that, or is it just a budgetary thing? It's a budgetary thing. Sometimes they think about all the frames you'd have to animate just for someone who moves their mouth because. There's a lot of mouth shapes you take while talking. Yeah. How about that beautiful, beautiful sound? Like, voice acting was alright, though. Yeah, I... Uh, Eva was a bit grating in the beginning. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I became accustomed to it by the end. I was slowly tuning it out a little. <laughs> Hey, and main, that was bad. Our main character, Ava, by the way, uh, her voice actor also was the voice of Hamtaro. And they, uh, <laughs> the, t the two voices are pretty similar. It'd be like, if you, so if you want to watch Hamtaro race mech pods. <laughs> yes. Please, please, somebody edit that. Photoshop that, please. <laughs> well, I know what I'm doing later. Ah. Uh... Maybe. I'll... I'll toss it in the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's gonna be a thumbnail then. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta have meme thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright, voice acting. I, it's not bad, but it's not uh, notable either to me, if that makes sense. So, the racing is really good. Got some decent, decent character development and drama going on as Donway is being uh, pressured by the president to win this ultimate uh, prize. Like, uh, saying the Earth is doomed. If they don't win this race. During the race, all of the participants' people aren't allowed to, uh, to attack each other, so the Krogs can't attack Earth. But as soon as the race is over, like, the Earth is fucked. That's why you prepare for the invasion during the race. They were doing their best to do that, but the Krogs are pretty powerful. And mm. they want to win this ultimate prize, this wish that can do anything to, uh... To save themselves from destruction. Prevent the Krogs from destroying them. Pretty sure that's what they use it for. It would make sense. While Donway is being pressured to uh, get the best results from his team and, and Eva, who is going by the name Molly, she... Not, not quite sure why. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... Do you really need a fake name? She's struggling with the fact that, uh, her dad doesn't recognize her, and she really doesn't want to tell him unless he figures it out himself. You think a not fake name would help that? Eh. We, we all know hmm? what it's like to not want to talk to someone. Oh, absolutely. I know exactly what it's like to not want to talk to someone. Haven't seen your dad in, like, ten years, and... Finally in off. front of him, and you're like, what the fuck do I say to this man? You went off for a pack of smokes ten years ago. <laughs> Dad, no! <laughs> He'll come back, back someday. Dad. Oh. God, I'm terrible. Yeah. But, after going... Um, she finds her dad after going off for a pack of smokes. <laughs> at a pod racing thing. <laughs> oh, Sorry. There's some, there's some sa sad shit going on. Uh, yeah. Be uh, about that, but. Go on, dude. Oh. Shit, I thought you were talking. I was, but then I forgot what I was saying. And then you just stopped mid sentence. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God damn it, dude. Uh, let's say, uh... Welcome to Night Parade, where I consistently forget my lines. What lines? Oh, wait, 
Shit, what are we talking about the fucking characters who we genuinely forgot a little bit about? Uh, Fuck it, let's I was talk talking about, about the, I was talking about the drama between uh, Molly and her dad. Yeah. Like, it, it's like that shit where you want to go, but don't. Yeah. Like you want to talk, but don't. Yeah. Uh, I'll jump back to the racing, <laughs> I guess. The race courses are pretty all, uh, pretty samey on on the first planet. They change it up every now and then, but it's it's most mostly just the same thing. Yeah, it's mostly just pod racing. But when they get to Oban, uh, the the race tracks are it's different every time. Got a nice varied uh, selection of courses. We got the like the, the planet's center, a uh, forest of lily pads, the desert, old abandoned ruins. Got the whole shebang. Good set pieces for pod racing. Oh yeah. Excellent, excellent pod racing soundtrack. The soundtrack was really good. Oh yeah. It was really, really yeah, it was a banger, all right. It's quirky. I liked it. I did as well. And that, that ED, my god, that ending. I was, I was not expecting the ED to be in Japanese. What <laughs> <laughs> just threw me through a loop. Like, a, wait, maybe this is an anime. Watching that, uh, that ED in context with the show is, it, it brought me, <laughs> I, I cried on the last episode. You Oh, you're so precious, dude. <laughs> wholesome. You are the most wholesome man I know. <laughs> oh, thank you. And you, you. I don't know how else to put it. It's kind of endearing. <laughs> and then I'm over here like, I didn't even cry while watching Clannad. <laughs> <laughs> And then, or uh, me, oh boy. or another time during another sad scene, I didn't, I didn't even cry during, oh uh, shoot, what's that thing we watched together, well, one of the shows we enjoyed together, that was sort of sad. Huh, was it for an episode, or just watching it in the free time? I think either for an episode or free time. I, I said either or, Fenris. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. From an episode, I think. Okay. Um. Two, two. Let me look at the list of unedited episodes. <laughs> to oh, see yeah. which ones that I probably cried in. Me or you probably cried in. Episodes that made me cry. Episodes that give tens out of tens. Kids on the Slope, Not So Huge not Intro, Chew 2. Probably cried out of rage at Fooly Cooly, but who knows. <laughs> I cried during literally one of those. <laughs> and then there's the episode... There's that rumored episode zero. Oh yes. Oh, we'll get to that. One day. Oh. Save it for our first trip around the sun doing this, maybe? Oh, yeah. By then, maybe I'll have the file uncorrupted. <laughs> Oof. Or we'll but, just redo it. Who knows? Yeah, let's we'll just redo it. Okay. <laughs> let's do the second season in while we're redoing it. Okay. Back to back. Yeah. It, it's like putting on your, uh... It's like that thing. Never mind. <laughs> but it, you're so wholesome, dude. Oh. It's <sighs> really nice. I get it from my mom. We fucking mm. cry at everything. That's adorable, <laughs> dude. I've I've cried at the high life insurance commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh at me. 
Oh, Those Thai life insurance commercials are very heavy stuff. <laughs> Especially the 7-Eleven one. That one gets me every time. Huh. But I digress. The soundtrack. We got the pod racing talked about. Soundtrack. Oh, favorite moment. Oh. Or do you not remember? There, I don't remember what episode it was from, but Jordan's mad and he's walking through one of the villages and he's approached by one of the vendors trying to sell him a dress and Jordan just says, get lost, I'm trying to be sad. <laughs> that is such a freaking mood, dude. <laughs> don't remember the context of it. I don't. Don't remember what episode it was from, but I love that quote. That is something great. You know, now that's my favorite moment. Hmm. Get lost and trying to be sad. But that's because that low key describes my state of being. <laughs> like, seriously, dude, I love sad shows. I know. I've been gentle so far. We're gonna we're gonna get some we're gonna watch some sad shit in the future. Yes, but I'm easing you into the pool. I am never watching Angel Beats. Angel Beats is honestly Angel Beats only gets me every time due to um, I can't make it past personal episode reasons. four on that one. Episode four is the worst too. Episode nine is the worst for me, followed by the final episode. And personally, I don't mind it that much. Angel Beats doesn't get, get to me as much anymore. But believe you me, it's still... If I hear its friggin' soundtrack, I am going to burst into a slight tears. <laughs> Holy shit. So, let's figure out our thoughts, dude. Should people watch Old On? Oh, definitely. Well... Um, <laughs> Watch it with your kids. <laughs> oh, I, Watch it with I, your children. I took that back so fast. <laughs> <laughs> You're walking back on watching it? Oh, uh, I mean, it's a good racing anime. And I had it, fun watching it, but I had nostalgia for it. And I didn't have nostalgia for it, and it was... All right. Yeah. Mm. I I I give it my seal of approval. But I <laughs> <laughs> I don't Is know this if difficult? it's Yeah, it's difficult. You don't know if it's the nostalgia talking or what. It, it's a kids show. It's made for kids. Yeah, but it, that doesn't stop it from being entertaining. It, it's definitely entertaining. It's better pod racing than Star Wars. Yes. It, it, if you watched episode one just for the pod racing, you'd probably like this show. Honestly, I don't know. We should have kept track of how many times I've said pod racing. I'd keep a counter in the corner, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Yeah, I think we said it like a hundred times by now. <laughs> and it's starting to lose all meaning. Oh, yeah. But let's uh, rate this whole. Well, I actually do suggest it, but I suggest watching it with your family or that. Watch it with a friend. Definitely watch it with a friend. Watch it with a friend, family, younger cousin. <laughs> Something like that. I am going to give Oban Star Racers an 8 out of 10. Be honest here, are you really going to rate this 8 out of 10? I am. Alrighty. Probably because that's the level I enjoyed it at. It, it was a bit choppy in the beginning, but by the end, I, I, I had fun. I was rooting for Molly as she raced through the courses on Oban... I cheered as she 
kick that son of a bitch Grog's ass. Uh, Krog, whatever the fuck his name was. That's his race, that, that, not his name. The butthole? Yeah. And it's just some funny, awesome, sad shit. <clears throat> well, not major sad shit, but sad shit nonetheless. There's definitely some sad shit. Yeah. I read this, uh, I give it a three, uh, oh. space pump. I give it a four space pods out of ten. Oh boy. That is truly meh. Yeah. Fairly average. <laughs> but that's because I have trouble watching stuff in space. Ah. Like, it, sci -fi, it was just sci -fi, on another planet. Sci fi and shit does not get along with me. Ah. It doesn't have to be space stuff. If, but if it's not cyberpunk, it's really not my jam. Alright. It's strange, but that's just a personal thing. I just am not a huge uh, sci-fi, spacey kind of person. Give or take cyberpunk. Okay, so I I wanted to do this episode, or I decided to pick Oban for this week because I came across a tweet by Thomas Romain who was the director of uh, Oban Star Racers. This tweet came out in... Or he, he uploaded this in uh, February 25th, 2017, uh, talking about they were they were uh, considering doing a sequel or spinoff of Oban t uh, Star Racers. Yeah. So... I'd be I, down to watch a spinoff or sequel. Oh, absolutely. I I want more Oban in my life. I'm relatively indifferent, though. <laughs> but holy shit, dude. That's some... <laughs> Max. Well, I don't think I've got anything else to add to this. I mean, my final thought would have to be... Um... It's thing. <laughs> it certainly is. And it's not terrible. It's average. Okay. It's good pod racing, average everything else. Okay. But still, overall, pretty enjoyable. Well, we've shared our thoughts, but we'd like to hear yours as well, in the comments below and on our Discord. The night parade has now come to an end. Next week, Black Lagoon.